In this video, I'm going to show you how to refinish your stairs. For this tutorial, you will need some sort of sander. To do the main sanding on the treads, I'm using a random orbital sander. To get into the corners, I'm using a square palm sander. To get any detailed spots, I'm using an oscillating tool with a sander attachment. For the finish, I'm using a water-based polyurethane by Rust-Oleum. You could also use an oil-based one if you'd like. I'm only using water-based because it produces much less fumes than an oil-based polyurethane. Some sort of wood filler to fill any holes that you may have in the wood. A nylon or a nylon polyester blend brush. A bucket is helpful. Sandpaper ranging in grits from 60 all the way to 220 depending on how bad your stairs are. A sanding sponge. If you are painting the risers or strings, you will need paint of some sort. I'm just using a generic white paint. A paint strainer. And I'm using Floatrol to get a brush free finish in the paint. A spackle knife to apply the wood filler or scrape anything that you don't want to get with a sander. Optional is some masking tape and some caulking. And general hand tools if you need to remove staples or nails. The steps you take to refinish your stairs depend on how good a condition they are to begin with or if you want to stain them if the condition is good and there's very light scratches you don't need to remove all of the existing finish you would first sand with 120 grit if the scratches are fairly deep then you would sand again with 150 grit and this is just to roughen up the finish for the new finish to adhere to if the finish is in very bad shape or you want to stain the treads or you're starting with brand new wood you will need to sand the wood until it's level and then keep sanding and moving up in grit until you get to around 150 grit. Then if you want to stain, you would stain at this point, then you would move to applying the finish. I'll include timelines in the description of where these different points are. First step, remove all nails, tack strips, and screws. Next step, sweep or vacuum up all of the debris. The next step is to sand the treads and the riser. If your stairs already have a finish on it and it's in good condition with very light scratches, you can start out at 120 grit. All you're looking to do is level it to get the scratches out. You don't want to go to the bare wood. After 120 grit, you could sand with 150 grit and then move forward to where we apply the finish to the stairs. I would strongly suggest using an air purifier of some sort. This will greatly reduce the amount of airborne dust that will get all over your house. Depending on the condition of your stairs, you can start out at 60 grit or 100 grit. Since my treads used to have carpet over it, it looks like water sat in and damaged the surface of the tread. So I'm going to start out at 60 grit and sand away this entire layer of damaged wood. For the risers, they look pretty good. So I'm going to start at 100 grit and sand the entire area. When sanding, you want to start at one end and slowly move like this. Overlap 50% and slowly move and continue making passes. Don't put any pressure on the sander. The weight of the sander itself is more than enough. You don't actually benefit by putting any extra weight on it. It won't sand any faster. It'll just clog up your sanding pad and put more strain on your sander. To protect the walls here, you could put something like a piece of cardboard. That way you could rub up against it and not damage your stringer right here. I'm going to demonstrate a few passes at normal speed to show you. If you have thick layer of paint on the sides of the tread and riser, this is where the square palm sander will come in handy because you can get in the corners like this. Same as with the other sander, I'm just going to get in here in the corner and slowly move back and forth like this. If you're having trouble getting into the very corners, you could angle your sander with a little bit of pressure and it should take off the extra paint. For the nose of the tread, you could take your sanding sponge. If you're going to refinish your strings, it's time to sand these as well. If there's a bunch of built up paint, you could use your spackle knife to get the worst of it off before you start sanding. Sanding is the same as the risers and the treads. If you're going to use the belt sander, you need to be very mindful of how much wood you're taking off. If you're removing very deep scratches or water damage, it's not too important of which direction you have the belt sander in relation to the grain. If you only have a small amount of wood to remove, you need to do it with the grain or else the scratches will be very noticeable because they'll be crosswise to the grain. For the hard to reach areas, this is where your multi-tool comes in handy. Any areas you can't reach, you could just use your sanding sponge. If you are needing to remove paint from the treads like I am, I suggest using a paint stripper. It's taking way too long to sand this. All you need to do is paint some of the stripper, let it sit for 20 minutes, and then scrape it off. I'm going to demonstrate now. Once the stripper has sat for 20 to 30 minutes, you can just scrape it off like this. 
and then continue to sand as normal to get the rest of it. After doing the first sanding with a very rough grit, it's important to thoroughly vacuum up all of the dust and grit from the sanding disc. This step also helps to remove all dust from any holes and shows you any spots you might have missed. It's time to fill in all holes and gouges. After the wood filler has dried, it's time to sand with a finer grit pad. It's best to move up in progressively finer grits of sanding pads all the way up to 150 grit. Always vacuum in between grits. I just did a 60 grit and I vacuumed, so now I'm going to do an 80 grit vacuum, a 120 vacuum, and then a 150 and then vacuum. After doing my last sanding with 150 grit sandpaper, I'm going to first vacuum it. Now I'm going to prepare the surface for stain. This involves wiping away all the dust with either a tap cloth or a microfiber towel. Then I'm going to mask the edges with tape so when I stain the surface, I don't get stain on the edges where I'm going to be painting. Then I'm going to spray my water or conditioner on the wood to allow the grains to raise. See my other video where I go into more depth about preparing for staining. Next, apply the stain. Okay, quick update. The stain was starting to come up as I was applying the poly, which suggests it's not fully dry. After some research, I found out that red oak specifically takes forever to dry, and it's not that you didn't wipe up the stain when you were applying it, or you didn't wait long enough. It's just that it continues to reject it back out over time. So you have to continue to wipe it every few hours after you initially apply the stain and wipe it off. That's why when I did my test piece on pine, there were no issues because the stain was completely dry within a few hours. Whereas this is about 36 hours later and it's still wiping up with the poly. You won't know this until you start applying the finish because when I wiped it, it was not coming up. But as soon as I applied the poly, it started coming up on the brush. So what I'm gonna do now is wait another 24 hours for it to completely dry. I don't wanna risk applying the finish and have it not stick to the wood because then all of this would be a waste of time. Here's the rag after wiping the stairs again 36 hours later. It's definitely still coming up, but I have to press very hard into the grains to get it to come out. What I've done is set up fans right here and a high velocity fan down there to really air things out. Hopefully the stain will for sure be dry in another 24 hours. I'll test it by wiping the poly on on a small spot. If I see any bleeding up again, I'm gonna wait another 24 hours until I know for sure it's completely dry. The stain is finally dried, so I'm gonna first vacuum. Then I'm gonna wipe it with my tack cloth or microfiber towel. Now I'm gonna apply the finish to it. I'm going to do my finish pass to remove any brush strokes or bubbles. Also, quick tip, make sure you don't work yourself into a corner. So I just finished this first flight. Once I get done with this second flight, I won't be able to get back up. So I'm going to make sure I unlock the door and I'll just hop up right here and then be able to let these dry. I would strongly suggest having a high velocity fan blowing on the drying finish the entire process. Continue to have it blow for at least three days afterward. This area right here is a dead zone. There's barely any airflow. And what happens is this will not dry correct. The puddles will dry very thick, which is not what you want. So just make sure and keep the airflow going. Once you're done applying the finish, cover up any cracks you don't want to see. I'm just going to put shoe molding right here along here. And down here, I'm going to put two different trims together to cover up that huge gap. To do this, measure how wide you need. In my case, I need 34 and 3 quarters inches. Next, measure and mark on your trim. Then make your cut. Next step, get your trim pieces, put them in place. And with a brad nailer, I'm just gonna nail in several spots right here. Next, I'm gonna put my other piece of trim on here, like this. Do this for all the other areas that you need to fill. Next, remove all the tape that you had put on the trim to mask it. Next up, get your caulking gun and apply caulking anywhere trim of the same color will meet. So right here, I'm gonna fill a gap here. Obviously, same here on every step. Same for right here. Since I'm gonna be painting over this together, I wanna to fill this little gap right here with caulking. Okay. 
I'm gonna get my sponge, wet my finger. I'm just gonna lightly run over it to make a nice radius in the caulking. All you're doing is covering up any gaps and putting a nice radius in there. For this next step, we're gonna start masking on the steps in preparation for painting the trim and the risers. So when I apply the tape, I'm gonna go roughly an eighth of an inch away from the trim. You don't need to press down too hard. You don't want to stick too much to your finish if it's not cured yet. So I'm just going to lightly press where it butts up. I'm not going to press anywhere else. For this middle part, I have masking paper with the tape. So I'm going to do that because I'm, I want to be able to rest my paint right here and I don't want to risk getting paint on the stairs. Now just do this for all of your steps. Next, we're going to apply caulking to each of these areas where we just taped up. So we're going to fill this entire eighth inch gap we just did. We're going to rub our finger like before and make a nice radius. It needs to go over the tape to create a nice seal. So I'm going to demonstrate now. Make sure to go all the way to where you can't see. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here. I'm going to wet my finger so it's lubricated. And I'm going to wipe my finger just like this lightly, making sure the caulking completely covers the tape. Start from the bottom right here and work up. Make it smooth and continuous. So you can see the caulking goes over the edge of the tape. So it's a complete seal covering the wood beneath it. So do that everywhere now. You might have to put multiple layers if there's a huge gap right here between the riser and the next tread. Next up, I'm gonna get my white trim paint and make sure it's mixed up and ready to go. And we're gonna paint the stringers as well as the risers. The caulking has to be wet at this point. Do not let it dry out. So lightly run along the caulking with a heavy layer of paint, but don't go too heavy or you wipe it away with the paintbrush. What I do is load it with the paintbrush and then just slightly go at it like this at an angle. And it'll coat it, but it won't wipe it away. And make sure and go heavy on the paint. Get up as high as you can. You don't need to touch the bottom of it because it'll just dirty up your paintbrush and you can't see it anyways. Once you've coated it with the paint, do a finish pass like we did when applying the finish to the stairs. I'm just gonna lightly go across like this. This is just to reduce the appearance of the brush marks. And that's what you're going for. Same for the stringers. Also, when you're loading up your paintbrush, don't wipe it off like this on the side because you're just throwing off all the paint you just loaded up. So I'm gonna dip it in the paint so it's dripping like this and just tap it on the sides. So it's still loaded up with paint, but it's not dripping everywhere. So I'm just gonna go back to the stringer right here. Coat it with a heavy layer of paint. Same as before, I'm gonna load the paintbrush up, come in here at an angle, and lightly brush it across so it soaks it up nicely. I'm also gonna do a finish pass, like that. Flip it upside down, put it at an angle, and do the finish pass here as well. Like that, so that reduces the brush strokes. They're very even and parallel, so once it dries, it should be relatively unnoticeable. If you're painting the walls like I am, you could overlap onto the walls since you're gonna be cutting them in after this. It doesn't need to be perfect right here. I'm just gonna quickly coat where it meets the wall. So I do this everywhere now. Also, I wanted to point out when I'm painting, I'm holding the brush like this or like this depending on where I am. I don't wanna hold it right here. This is gonna tie your route really quickly since you're applying force right here, then you're having to lift it from way over here. So it's best to hold it like this if you're in the corners or you can flip it at a different angle depending on where you're trying to get. After I painted a couple steps, it's time to come back to the first one. And before the paint has completely dried, it still needs to be slightly wet, but not so runny that it's running on the tape. Just remove the tape like this. Keep it at an angle. After you paint a couple steps, come back to some previous steps and remove the tape. Once you're done painting around the stairs, you can do your cut-ins right here for the wall. After you have done the cut-ins, put anything you remove like railings. At this point, you should be done. Make sure and vacuum anything up, clean up any paint spots that you might have dropped. Inspect everything. And that is how you refinish hardwood stairs. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe.